I I um got to before I can uh turn off the lights and close the garage shop. I stopped welding about an hour ago. So I'm just making sure nothing's on fire. Uh, Chad and Jolene were out this afternoon for a few minutes. Oh, cat beat me down here. He was up at the house a minute ago. So anyway, uh, yes, all kinds of fun here. I got started anyway. <clears throat> Saw that. Okay, uh, up in here, I welded it where I could, like where you can see it in the trunk, and I riveted with big rivets wherever there was tar and, of course, the rubber, and uh, way too much tar, even though a lot I got a lot out, but I'm I still have to weld right here. I'm not finished there, but. Them here is done, and as I said, I'm not done. I just started, but uh, what a hell of a place! Uh, it's almost like I forgot how to weld. That's how hard it is to weld upside down at weird angles. But anyway, I managed to mount it in there, and I'm gonna undercoat it pretty heavy duty when I'm all done. But uh, anyway. That's the start of it anyway. Um, yep, it wasn't, uh, it was only fun when I got each patch on. The ribbits were halfway decent, a little hard to weld, but the ribbiting wasn't too bad. I used the big ribbits because I have, uh, <clears throat> where is it? Hmm, I don't see it. Oh, right here. This great big rivet gun, which um, kind of, when I I can use my hands down here and press up on it, and it goes in hard, uh, like hard to the surface, and then you, you just hit, pull that a couple times, and the rivet breaks off. And these arms are both bent. That's how hard those rivets bend. They're both bent. They need almost like a, a solid steel rod through the center of them or stronger stuff. But anyway, um, in here, it I'm going to weld. I can't weld anything up in here on this patch because that's where that... Uh, support goes down and it's just covered with tar. I can weld from here down to here and I'm going to put a like a angle iron or angle uh, coming down here over to this um, edge here and butt weld like I'm going to curve it down over to this edge of the original fender. Then when I undercoat the undercoating will go in and get all this. I'm not going to weld it to here. I'm going to bring it like an angle and weld it to this edge. But up here, I'm just going to make the same patch, but it's going to weld to here, but I'll have to put rivets up in there and um, going forward. And of course, I'm still welding, still doing it. And I haven't started this side, but I had to start someplace, but it doesn't appear to be on fire. Uh, the only place it's way up, way up in there, and I don't see any smoke or any any flames. I'll check the fender. I'll check for coldness on the fender. But boy, that um, yeah, it's it's pretty cold. It was 30 degrees in here this morning, but it's warmed up a little bit. And in, in here, that's uh, the older patch. But anyway, um, yeah, it's coming, but not not the funnest or most exciting thing. And it and the worst thing about it is with pop rivets and welding in such a miserable spot. 
it uh it looks looks real sloppy but it's solid and when it gets a layer of tar smeared over it that'll um it'll like factory they they're pretty sloppy with the tar on almost every car built even that ferrari uh super sloppy with the tar and the caulking and stuff so it doesn't really matter yeah, you know, on the undercarriage, how quite how good a job you do if you want it original, because the original tar job um, is put in there just as sloppy as anything. So, it, you know, and almost every car I've ever seen, the tar job is sloppy. But anyway, um, see you guys later. Thanks, thanks a lot, and see you later. Bye.